But then there was this moment where I realized that I needed healing from something that happened to me when I was a kid. And what had happened was when I was seven years old, I was sexually molested by someone that was very close to me. And it caused a lot of rejection from my family members. Like it introduced rejection and even just abandonment because a lot of my family members did leave and like even just that relationship when I ha that I had with them when they were when I was young it ended and because I was a child I guess I you know I was with my parents like you know they were enough for me but I didn't really dwell on it or think about it too much I just kept moving but there was still that void and that like you know they're gone so I was actually born in Honduras and I came here to the United States when I was five. I grew up in a Christian household, basically, um, from like a young age, like even when I lived in Honduras, I remember like going to church with my grandma and my aunts and like, and then coming here as well, like my parents would take me to church. And I did enjoy it. Like, you know, we had kids class <laughs> and I like learned all the Bible stories. I automatically thought I was a Christian because you know, I went to church with my parents almost every Sunday. Um, I did the right things. I, you know, pretty much grew up with like, like a fear of being bad. So like I would listen to my parents and my parents weren't like necessarily strict, but they did have like expectations of me. Um, I was also the oldest. I have two younger brothers. So I had to like always set the example. And, you know, I did try my best to like be good. Like I didn't want to get in trouble. That was like most of my life like growing up there was some wild things that happened as I grew up but I guess because I was young I didn't really have sorry um I didn't really have an understanding of what was happening to me I guess I put everything like somewhere in the back of my mind and I was like well that happened and I moved on right and continue to live my life when I was officially 12 I remember I started going to this life group and I met this girl and she, she became my leader and her name was Katie. And basically she began to like talk about God and her relationship with God and her experiences with God. And I was like, wait a second, like my life looks nothing like that. Like I'm a Christian, but my walk and like me calling myself a Christian is nothing compared to that. Like I basically just went to church and like, you know, to the services or different things that the church had going on. And I was like, what? Like how how and it didn't and it 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 was in that moment when like this kind of this hunger and this desire began to grow in me and I was like am I missing out on something like what's happening and so our church actually had these really cool retreats type things um where people would leave for a weekend right and um they were basically designed for you to encounter God and his presence and I remember um, growing up, like a couple of my family members would go and even my parents went and I remember that they would come back and they would just be like different people and like be transformed. And I was like, like, what happened there? Like, what do they do to you that like makes you like be this way? And so I always kind of had this like curiosity of going just because I was like, I wonder what would happen to me. Not even anything related to God. I was just wondering like what happens there? And so... Yeah, when I was officially 13, I was able to go and I signed up, I went and then they had this session basically. And this session was um, them just sharing the gospel, just just them sharing Jesus and, and what he had done for us and the sacrifice that he had paid and that we were sinners and that we carried brokenness and pain, but that he took that. And, and I was, and as I listened, it was almost like, you know, I had heard this because I grew up in the church, but it was almost like I had never heard it before. It was, it felt so fresh and, and it just hit me. And I was like, you know, wow, like Jesus actually did this. And then they gave us this pamphlet, this like little book to like of different like areas of sin or like brokenness in your life. And I was like, okay, like, let me, let me look through it and stuff. And they were like, you know, if there's anything on here that um, you've done or anything that you feel like you carry just check it off right and allow God to search your heart and allow him, like you know be have the freedom to give those things to him today because like that's what the session was designed for and so I looked through it and as I was reading through it I began to check off different things and as I did this I began to cry and I was like wow like I'm not really good like all my life I thought I was good 
I thought I was fine. I thought I, there wasn't really any area of pain or, or hurt in me. But as I checked these things off, I remember like even just checking off not being able to forgive others. I think that was one of the things that resonated with me because there were people in my life that I no longer spoke to that had hurt me. And I, I guess there was a part of me that was like not forgiving them. I didn't know how to. But there was just a bunch of things on there and I began to check them off. And then I, I was just crying and I was like, God, like I'm a sinner, like I'm broken, I'm a mess. And so they had also made this um, invitation that if you wanted to like accept Jesus into your life as your Lord, as your Savior, you could go up front and, you know, just surrender your life to God. So I did. I ran up there. I fell on my face and I was just crying. And I just felt this conviction like come over me of my, you know, my brokenness, my sins. And that was the moment that Jesus met me. I simply made that choice. Like, it wasn't, you know, a crazy encounter where like God shows up, but it was just this conviction, like this thing in my heart that just knew like you're a sinner and you're in need of Jesus. So that's the moment where my life just changed and I had no idea what was coming next. Yeah. Talk to us about your experience with Jesus after. You know, you mentioned that there were some crazy stuff that happened, but obviously as you come into his presence, different things begin to come up. So just tell us a little bit about that and, and what your walk looked like after uh, you had this this moment of repentance and yeah. um, just coming to him. So yeah, I had this moment and it definitely took some time. That's how Jesus is. Like he's so patient with us and he takes us through this process of like showing us things, exposing things in us in kindness and in love to bring us into a place of freedom and to restore us. I began to, you know, really build a relationship with him like through prayer and through reading the word and and just seeking his face but you know also the beautiful thing is we have this gift called community right and so when you're in community and you give that access to your leaders and people in your life they're able to help you through you know the rough things in life but then there was this moment where I realized that I needed healing from something that happened to me when I was a kid and what had happened was when I was seven years old, I was sexually molested by someone that was very close to me. And it caused a lot of rejection from my family members. Like it introduced rejection and even just abandonment because a lot of my family members did leave. And like even just that relationship when I ha that I had with them when they were, when I was young, it ended. And because I was a child, I guess I, you know, I was with my parents, like, you know, they were enough for me, but I didn't really dwell on it or think about it too much. I just kept moving. But there was still that void and that like, you know, they're gone. So can you just talk to us a little bit about why the rejection came? Why did yeah. they decide to leave? I think it really started because I hadn't told anyone for about a year when I was seven. Like I didn't tell anyone because I was scared. Like I just knew that if my family were to find out, like everything would change. I don't know how I knew that, but I just knew like, if I say anything, this is gonna happen. Like something bad is gonna happen. And so the only person I remember telling was my cousin. She was like a sister to me. And so we were one day hanging out with my mom and she was like, you need to tell your mom like about what happened to you. Like, because I want you to be safe, you know? And so, and she needs to know, like she loves you and she cares for you. And so I like, took all the courage I had. I was so afraid and I told my mom and you know, my mom, like she was so kind and, and, and just there for me. And she was like listening. And obviously in that moment, it, it was hurtful and it was hard for her to hear. And then later that day, I tried to tell my dad but I guess because of his relationship with this person, it was really hard for him to like accept it. And so he kind of like refused to listen. And I understand now that it wasn't because he was necessarily trying to make me feel like I, he didn't care, but it was because of the relationship that he had. And I think when you, when you are given such a crazy news, like sometimes you need time to process it. Um, so I understand now, but at the time, it was that moment, you know, like I'm sharing this crazy news with my dad of what happened to me and he like doesn't care. Like he just like pushes me away and is like, no, like I, I can't hear about this. Like I'm busy, like he's watching a movie. And I was like, like this took me so long to be able to tell you and you don't even care. And so I remember that night, like we left and it was me and my mom and my brothers, we left. And my dad, like, he stayed back. So it was that moment when I felt like the rejection and like the abandonment, like this spirit came to like really just follow me and oppress me. 
I had no awareness of it. And um, again, like I just pushed the feelings back. Like when you're a child, you do that to protect yourself, you know? So I did that. And then I just realized like later on when I, when I was, um, I believe I was like 16 when I realized like I, I need healing from this. I realized like this rejection and abandonment had been following me all my life. And I began to see as well. Like even instances with friends, like I felt like I could never tell any of my friends because I felt I was not normal. I felt like I was like they would if I told them they would leave me like they wouldn't be my friend anymore. Like but even like I recognized too, like when I was struggling, like with, you know, just certain thoughts or like when I felt like I needed help, like I couldn't really tell anyone because I felt like if I opened up with anything, like people would leave or people wouldn't really like stay and support me or help me through it. I had this battle with vulnerability and like being able to open up. And it was because of what I had experienced when I was little, the rejection and then people leaving the abandonment. So how how did the Lord help you through that? To, to be able to gain that healing and, and restore that trust in, in people. So what happened after I, you know, I opened up, I, sh I was finally, I had the courage, like when I was 16, um, to share with some of my leaders and, you know, be real about what happened. And they basically just took me on a journey of healing. Um, they kind of were like, this is something that God is going to do. Um, we're going to help you through it. They gave me resources. But the main thing that like healed me was just sitting with Jesus, like mm. super simple. But I would get into like be alone in my room and I would just cry out. And I just began to sit with God and I just began to experience his acceptance. And I even remember the moment when I felt like like his presence come to swallow up all the abandonment I felt. I remember asking Jesus, like, Jesus, where, like, where were you that moment um, that I was sexually molested? And he began to show me, like, all the years of my life, and he was in every year. You know, little moments, like, that I remember, and I saw him there, like, every year, year after year, just standing there. And, like, I knew that, that he had always been with me, even when family members left, even when um, I was scared to talk to anybody, that he was right there and he, he knew like what I was experiencing and what I felt. And so um, it was just such a beautiful moment. And I just had times and times like this when when I even just um, just needed to process like what I felt and like the healing and I would just sit with Jesus and tell him and, and take that time to also hear what he was saying about me. But yeah, his his presence just just crying out to him, just being with him is what lifted off of the aban the abandonment. And the beautiful thing too was having community, like having people in my life. Like there was times I felt certain types of way and I would come to church or like I would be with my friends and they would just know, like they would just know, I don't even know how, like Jesus, right? They would just know that I needed like a prayer. Or I needed like a word or something that impacted me so much throughout those years. That's really how the Lord kind of took me on this journey of healing, being with him, opening up to my leaders, inviting my friends into the process, being honest with myself. Yeah. <laughs> now, just for fun, yeah. um, when, when you were in that moment, you know, seeing Jesus in every part of your life. Can you describe one of those moments? Do you do you have one of those memories where you saw him in um, mm -hmm. that you can recall? I guess it was just like little flashbacks like of my life. Like even like when I was in Honduras and like there was a time where my parents actually, both of my parents left, um, which is probably another example of like when I felt abandoned. But I remember even um, just just being at my house over there and Jesus just sitting there with me. Little moments like that, like me walking home from school when I felt sad, when I felt like I couldn't tell anyone and like in school and like I felt so weird because I thought about what had happened to me and I saw Jesus there. Different moments, like even as I got older and my parents also, like their marriage was falling apart and I felt like I had no one to like, talk to about it because I felt like I had to, you know, keep it all together. And I, I even just saw Jesus in those moments as well. Like just all these moments, like the beautiful moments, the hard moments, there was just 
little flashbacks like it it was like you know those little flip books mm -hmm. and you but i just saw jesus in every every little image every little thing that happened i saw him there and so that was enough for me to just know that all my life he had been there all my life he had been taking care of me all my life he had been keeping me and protecting me how did that change the trajectory of your life i was able to move forward in life knowing that he was always by my side mm. and knowing that like no matter who stayed who left like he was always going to be there for me and he was enough i felt like that gave me such a boldness to be who i was and to be able to help others you know not just get stuck in my own pain and my own sorrows but be able to see the world to be able to see people that were stuck that were broken and be able to help them and so just knowing like he's always by my side he's always with me his presence follows me everywhere i go um there's a psalms um that i love and it says that he he goes before us and in, into our future um and he prepares it for us but he also protects us from the harm of our past and so i've seen jesus do that time and time again so my like my life is just completely changed yeah I, I want you to touch on that really quick because mm -hmm. usually with people who are sexually molested, who who experience sexual trauma, um, the trajectory of their life, mm -hmm. it's pretty bad. Yeah. Right? We, we either fall more into pornography or more into sex and into these other areas, right? But for you, it was a little bit different, right? Yeah. It, like you said, God protected you. Can you just talk about that and, and what yeah. God did in that space? So honestly, I kind of don't have, I feel like it's kind of a miracle. <laughs> like it, it, sometimes I think about it and I'm like, God, like you really like kept me, like you protected me because I could have easily fallen into so many things. And I think also, and, and this is another example of how God like does work all the, 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 you know, the bad and the, the tough things for our good. Like after that happened to me, I did have fears, I guess, surrounding like sex and like anything around it. It kind of shut down my curiosity about it. Like I was afraid of it. And also like I felt like if I did anything surrounding that, like my parents would be bad. So it was kind of it was a fear based uh, situation. So I didn't allow myself to like go there. But yeah, like that's another area God also had to redeem and restore and give me like the right design for it. Mm. But he kept me like he gave me back my innocence. Like I feel like when I said yes to Jesus, even without knowing, he gave me back my innocence and I was OK. But I still had that fear, you know, um, which also kind of like, you know, prevented me from doing things that I shouldn't shouldn't have or would have affected me even more yeah yeah how did you redeem that part of your life <laughs> it's a crazy story too um even with that like i guess i felt shame i felt a lot of shame because i was like how could anyone ever love me like how could a man ever love me like with like what had happened to me like i felt mm -hmm. you know not worthy i felt like i wasn't worthy to be loved in that way so yeah, like I remember telling God that I wasn't going to date anyone until I was 18. And then I met Jonathan, which is my husband. And even like before then, I was still processing like the rejection and the abandonment. But we, you know, when we first met, like we obviously liked each other. But I told him like, I was like, I don't want to date anyone till I'm 18. So like we can be friends. And we did. We became best friends. Like literally like friends. Like it was completely friend zone. <laughs> um, and we had accountability. Like we told our leaders that we liked each other. And, and so they also, you know, helped us to like, you know, actually be friends. But it was through his friendship that like God like used him to redeem that. Because like not only did he wait for me when I, I met him when I was 15, but he not only did he wait for me until I was 18, but... God like used him as like a man to to just show me like what like love through a man is supposed to look like. And even obviously with Jesus, like I took that time to surrender those fears to him, um, that shame that I felt because only he could do it. Right. Only he could set me free from the feelings I had about myself. But through friendship with Jonathan and then later when I turned 18, we started dating I was able to open up and actually share with him like my story 
And he, when I did, like, he didn't run away. Like, I remember sharing it with him, and, and like, he, he listened, and he told me that, like, it didn't change the way that he saw me, and he just, like, encouraged me and was, like, like, I can see even how, like, God has used this to, like, make you into the person you are today. Like, it, it really just broke off all the shame and all the lies, like, that moment. And I had, like, been praying about it for weeks. Like, even before, I, like, I shared with him, and I was like, God, like, I'm so scared to, like, tell him. But I want to tell him, you know, because, like, I want to be honest with him. And, and I think, like, even when we were friends, like, I always kind of, like, had this balance of knowing what to share with him, like, and, like, the process of the things that I was going through because I didn't want to like just throw all my emotions on him. And I did have like like a like a, a leader in my life that I could trust and share with her about like, you know, the things that, you know, you want to share before to, to other people before you share with your significant other, right? Before you're actually married, right? Because there's some things that you want to reserve for marriage or like even the dating season. So yeah, like I, that moment just, just, just helped me so much. Like it, it was like another part of my healing process and it broke off that shame and that the lies that I had felt for so long. And I think like after when we got married, um, because you know, the enemy obviously still tries. Like even before we're getting, we're gonna get married, I still felt just like certain times when the enemy would try to like attack me with that, with the lie, like, like how could he love you? Like when you've gone through this or like, what's going to happen, like, you know, when when you actually experience, like, even having sex. <laughs> like, it was just crazy. But then I got married, and, like, the Lord, like, just took over. Like, his, his presence just met us. It was just crazy. It felt like I had battled with those things for so long for no reason. Um, because when we entered into covenant marriage, there's such a peace and such a— He affirmed me in so many ways. I felt, like, so, so free. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jasmine, for anybody who's watching your testimony right now, what's a word of encouragement that you can give them if they're finding themselves in a place where they feel rejected, where they feel like everybody has left them or everybody who they come in contact leaves them? What can you say to that person? I would tell them that, that Jesus is closer than we know that he is the one that never leaves and that his hand is always reached out to you and that in him you will find the freedom that your heart needs to live to live this life on earth even if people were to leave you even if people were to walk away Jesus would still be there Jesus would would remain he's the one that that can fill that place in your heart and in your life Jasmine what would you say to little Jasmine <laughs> who is dealing with the sexual attack and feels alone, what would you say to her? I would tell her that she's not alone. Um, and that, that God, is, God is preparing a bright future. That even like all the, all the suffering and all the questions one day will, will, seem, like, will seem like nothing because of the future God has prepared and, and the people that he would place in your life. Jasmine, how's your relationship with your parents, with, with your mom and your dad? Um, the last we heard of him in this testimony was that he did push you away, right? Because of yeah. what you had shared with him. Where's your relationship with him now? Our relationship is, is growing. One of the major things that Jesus taught me when I was healing um, was about forgiveness. I had so many moments where I was overcome by the way that he forgave me. And so I knew that I could extend it to my dad. There's a lot of moments where I had to have conversations with him that were uncomfortable. And a lot of times I had to initiate them, but I told him that I forgave him 
that I understood him, even in his pain and his confusion surrounding what had happened and the person that was so close to him. I just really began to catch God's perspective and heart for him. There was a lot of other things that happened with between my parents. We later on, they had a divorce, so that was another whole thing to navigate through, but I placed the boundaries I needed to, but I also forgave and I continued to love him and give him space. So our relationship is definitely growing. God is still restoring. There's obviously things that on his side, um, he's working through. Um, but I feel like on my side, God's done so much and I love him and I welcome him and we're we're growing. Yeah. And then with my mom, like she she's always been an anchor for me. She she constantly inspires me and like she she's someone I just honor. She's so strong and so yeah, like our relationship, we're good. <laughs> I'm just thankful for her life and just all that she did for me and the way she fought for me. Yeah. Did you ever get a chance to interact or speak with the person who abused you? Um, I didn't. So now I do speak to them, but, you know, sometimes you won't necessarily find closure with people, but you can find closure within yourself and within the, with the Lord. So... There's a moment I had with Jesus where I had to forgive this person for what they had done to me, even without them being there, and release them to God. And I remember I accidentally like ran into them one time and they didn't see me, but I saw them and I started panicking because I was like, oh my God, like I haven't seen them in so long. And I just began to get scared because I was like, what if like they find out and they like see me again? And that's when I knew why I needed healing as well. This was when I was 16 too, but as I brought this to the Lord, the Lord was like, the first step is to release them, to forgive them, to give to give this person and what they did to me. And so I was able to do that. And now like I can look this person in the face without fear, um, with love and compassion and understanding. Even with every person that like left, every person that hurt me along the process, I guess I've been able to understand like, even though they did these things, that there is something that they carry that's hurting them and that's why they hurt others. Or there's something in them that needs healing and restoration too. And it gave me compassion and understanding for people. So I know that I'm free from what happened. And now I can just love despite what happened. Yeah. Jasmine, who is Jesus to you? Uh, Jesus to me is my best friend. He's my safe place. He's the person that I can always run to when I'm happy, when I'm sad. Anytime, anything that I'm feeling, living through, um, he's a, he's my safe place. He's my home. Any last words for the people watching your testimony? I would just say that Jesus is the best friend you could ever have. And he offers this type of freedom and this type of love to to everyone who's willing to, to say yes and, and to... I know that sometimes it can be hard to make those choices to choose him because sometimes what you see in front of you feels more real and more tangible, but he's the realest one. And he's the one that, even though it may not feel like it in the moment, is gonna bring you out into freedom, into a clear space, into wholeness. And he, he wants to do that with you and for you. And he, like, just the way that he did it for me, and he prepared such a beautiful future for me, even though I face so many things, he can do that for you. There's still so much hope for you, and he's making a way. So take the choice. Make that choice to choose him.